Okay. Screen sharing. Okay. Okay, so um, we're going to get started. And last time um, when we all met for the forum, I I forgot to um, tell you a little bit about Cheryl before we got started. Um, so Cheryl Bolo Hatch, as you all know, is one of our um, under Manulite. And she earned her PhD in anthropology from the University of New Mexico, where she taught 100 to 200 level college courses in archaeology. She has designed and led hands-on science activities for high school students and programs run by the National Federation of the Blind. Cheryl founded Museum Census, and she consults with museums on improving accessibility for people who are blind or have low vision. So Cheryl, with that, we're off and starting. Thank you very much. Can you pull up the second slide, please? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I wanted to start with a little bit of background just to remind you of a few things. Uh, around 10% of the world's population has a disability. So that's about 650 million people, according to the World Health Organization. So people with disabilities are the largest minority. And this is a minority that everyone is conceivably capable of joining. Um, <laughs> so there are the people with disabilities, the numbers growing because of population growth, medical advances, and the aging process. And I will note here that medical advances is the reason I'm alive. I was born three months premature. I was in an incubator. I came home eventually, and it so happened that there's a reason why people, you know, babies are supposed to develop for nine months. They're very delicate, you know, eyes and brains and such. And it turns out that something happened in the incubator. I was exposed to pure oxygen and it damaged the nerve connection between the retina and on the optic nerve to the brain. So I was alive and growing and my parents, you know, did what all good parents do and raised, raised me, we figured out ways to work around it. But as I grew in life, I became more and more aware of things called ableism. So if you go to the next slide, please. I'm there. <clears throat> all right, so just to remind you all, ableism is a term for the discrimination and social prejudice against people with disabilities. It is based on the belief that typical abilities are superior. And like racism and sexism, ableism is classifies entire groups of people as less than and includes harmful stereotypes, misconceptions, and generalizations about people with disabilities. So ableism and discrimination are you know, just a difficult part of life. So I'm, last time I talked about ableism generally in life. Today, I'm going to talk about my experience with ableism in experiences with Christians and in churches generally. This might be hard to hear for some of you, um, but I am not picking on anyone in particular. I have lived long enough to um, have some experience so for you, maybe you have experienced evangelical Christians. Maybe you have asked the question, have you been saved? I will tell you as a person with disabilities, I get that question and a lot more attention. I get asked if people want to pray for me, if people want to heal me, if I believe that Christ could heal me. Now, remember, I've lived my entire life as a blind person. I don't want to have these experiences. So I have my <laughs> a little while ago, Beth and I made a list as I was preparing for this presentation of public places where people have come up to us and offered unsolicited attempts to pray for us and heal us. And this is going about our business generally anywhere. Um, standing on a street corner waiting for a traffic light to change. And then I have to tell people, listen, I need to pay attention to the traffic. Uh, people at bus stops and train stations have come up to us. 
in taxis or other you know ride share that's the worst because you're talking to a driver and you're trying not to have the conversation but you also need to get where you're going and also other places um someone once came up to us at a restaurant having a meal and someone you know i have been asked in restrooms just all over just public places and i have had conversations over the years with other people with disabilities and I'm not the only one to have experienced this. And so people with disabilities think of Christians a lot of times in that intrusive way. It's nothing you've done, but that is a perception. So the, the behavior of people wanting to pray for us and lay hands on us to us is unwelcome. It is intrusive. It is as offensive as some people would say, pray the gay away. We don't do that as a church, and many churches don't. Um, and so we have always looked for affirming churches, um, but we rarely find churches that are more affirming about people with disabilities. People, progressive churches generally tend to get the same-sex relationships and the LGBT stuff, but disability is something that churches generally have to work on. So is as, parishioners, we have to decide uh, how much to tolerate or educate at a place and how much, whether or not we want to limit our involvement or in some instances, eventually leave a church. And I'll talk about some of those in a little bit. Um, so examples of ableist discriminatory behavior we have experienced in churches. I talked about some of this last time, being grabbed instead of given verbal directions, where someone will grab my arm or grab the other end of my cane. Uh, this one is unique to churches, being clonked in the teeth with a chalice instead of simply putting it in my hand. I will say that you at Emmanuel don't do that. In fact, I think I commented to someone when, when we first came in, in 2012 about it being nice not to be clonked in the teeth with a chalice. It's a low bar, but it's it's nice when that one is exceeded. Um, sometimes members of congregations in several states have refused to let us participate in services. I remember a particular person who actually told me on Holy Thursday, no, don't wash my feet. She wouldn't, wouldn't sit down for me after she washed mine. That's extreme, but the some version of that you know, can happen. I have been at other churches where staff ignore our request for materials in braille or electronic formats. Uh, that's some, some of the things we've dealt with. I have been in churches where people refuse my offer to participate in activities. We don't need you to volunteer. Um, sometimes this is around hospitality issues. Sometimes this is around liturgy. Um, this one that we always have to deal with in churches, routinely having to endure worship services with ableist language. And I'll go through some of that. Next slide, please. Examples of ableist language in prayers and hymns. We've got over a thousand pages in the prayer book, probably that many in the hymnal. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we've carried with hundreds of years, and it just has baggage. So, uh, uh, Rob, having a problem? Uh, Rob, are you, Rob, did you start sharing a screen? It looked like it. I don't think he intended to. I don't think so either. Let me, let me find out what's going on. Rob, did you start sharing your screen? I think they muted themselves. You want to mute yourself and talk to me? <laughs> Can you unmute yourself and talk to me? Yeah, I tried to um, get rid of the panel that was uh, covering over the text. Okay. Oh. Okay, what you can do, what you can do, Rob, and anybody here, by the way. So let me do this first. Let me share my screen. Um, this will stop another, do you want to continue? Yes, I do. 
I hold up. Um, so this is what all of us can do if you want to get that panel away. One is um, go uh, go up to the top of all the people, all the all the heads. You have your options. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, go up to the top, and there's a and there's some there's some options up there, the like little boxes. You it's can click. On, yeah, you can click on one. Yeah. And it'll just show I, you the active speaker vid video, and so you just you'll get just get Cheryl. It's the second. Do you see it? You, hide video panel. Hide. Yeah. There's a hide thumbnail video. Yeah, I just got no, rid of you. Yeah, but. <laughs> You just got rid of me, huh? Okay, great. <laughs> and other folks can do that too. You can just go to the very top of all of the faces, and there's there's um, there's options there about how you how you can share how you can see people. Okay. Okay. Great. No, that was that was great. All right, that was an opportunity to learn something new. Okay, there you go, Pete. Thank you, Laura. That 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 worked. No, no, there's a problem. Hey, Pete, there's a there's another new one. That was one I didn't know. <laughs> okay, Cheryl. Well, I'm glad you knew that one because I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I, you have to learn something. Just go with the flow. So we should be at example of Abel's languages and prayers and hymns still? You are there, my dear. Perfect. So in prayers and hymns, I talked about this last week about using uh, physical characteristics for metaphors. Uh, and I talked about how I really hated the expressions about being blind to or turn a blind eye to and things like that. This is going back to uh, Pete's takeaway. So I'm about to read to you the prayer that I hate the most out of the prayer book. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness, hint metaphor, cannot ask, grant the same Jesus Christ, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I really dislike the fact that blindness is a metaphor for ignorance here. If you're going to say ignorant, mm -hmm. say ignorant. I found a better replacement Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in your name of your son. Accept and fulfill our petitions. We pray not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So there's lots of stuff in the prayer book. There's no reason for that prayer um, about using blindness like that. If you follow the news, you know that people can be ignorant whether they have physical vision or not. I know people who are fully sighted who are ignorant. I know people who are fully blind who are ignorant. Physical vision has nothing to do with it. So that is, but the prayer book has hundreds of years worth of baggage. The hymnal has hundreds of years worth of baggage. Um, for example, a lot of hymns have what I consider to be throwaway lines about uh, people with disabilities. And they're, you know, usually like one particular verse. Uh, and I'm passing by because we sang one in at the end of January, I just copied. And it's, hear ye deaf, ye voiceless ones, ye loose, loose in tongues. You blind behold your savior comes, you leap your lame for joy. It's like, so what? Why are we with people with disabilities stage props in these hymns? Um, and there's just a lot of stuff. It can be raining. It can be uh, just a lot. So I just mentioned that slide there because there is ableist language in hymns and prayer books. And we'll talk about scripture a little later but so next slide, please. So there is a really good publication that I found that was published it was a couple decades ago now, but it's still pretty good. It's called That All May Worship. It's an interfaith welcome to people with disabilities. It was published by the National Organization on Disability and the authors include Jenny Thorn Thornburg and Ann Davies. And it's, they created a guide that helps transform congregations of all faiths into places where children and adults with disabilities are welcome and honored. And there's, it's a free book 
uh, PDF if you follow the link that's on the slide here at some point. And if you want, I can make sure that that link is distributed. Um, but it has a lot of great resources for a lot of different things to think about. And so it, it will go through some of those takeaways, Pete, that you asked me about. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the things that the, they recommend in this That All May Worship Handbook is creating an, a disability awareness committee. At Emmanuel, we have an accessibility committee, which right now is handling physical accessibility of the building uh, with the wheelchair accessibility and the ramps and the elevators, which is vital, but it's not enough. There's a lot more that needs to be done. I'm thinking in Emmanuel, you know, we can do, we can talk about disability awareness and inclusion and accessibility in the same way we talk about anti-racism and some of the other initiatives that we um, do. But we need to have some kind of way to track and actually do work for issues around disability. Uh, and this is something that I intend us to discuss more and I can show this worship again. I can, I can uh, su submit the slide link. Uh, next slide, please. And I'm going down past because I, uh, here we go to infirming language. Remember last time I talked about person first language referring to the principle that the person is primary and the disability is secondary and disability is one characteristic of many. Language should affirm rather than exclude. So uh, you could say, you know, in this quote for an announcement, worshipers with disabilities may request assistive listening devices rather than disabled worshipers may request devices. Uh, also in language, there's one uh, ableist term, which I forgot in my long list last time, uh, referring to the, pr the correct usage is person who uses a wheelchair. Uh, the phrase wheelchair bound or confined to a wheelchair are not good choices at all. And so far I haven't seen us use them. I don't want us to, to use them. Um, next slide, please. So I think that we, as an organization in Emmanuel, should set a policy to have person first language generally. Use the style guide link that I showed last time. And that's another link that I can send again. I think that we should reduce the amount of ableist language in our services where possible. Um, where a choice of scripture is allowed in the lectionary, I would love us to avoid some of the ableist scriptures that are out there. This um, would require clergy buy-in and it's, it's, it's something to be discussed. Uh, however, I will go on when an ableist scripture is unavoidable. I think we as a congregation should counterbalance it with messages about people with disabilities by acknowledging and presenting more modern ideas. For example, you know, people with disabilities do contribute and this, um, publication that we looked at has, they were working on some uh, prayers. Uh, next slide, please. So there's a prayer, I just quoted some lines from it that someone put together a litany talking about disability and people and the work. So let us pray for God's people, for people who move slowly because of accident, illness or disability and for those who move too fast to be aware of the world in which they live. And the response is, God in your mercy, help us work together. Uh, the next, next few phrases I like even better. For people who feel isolated by their disabilities and for people who contribute to that sense of isolation, response, God in your mercy, change our lives. That's kind of like the prayer language that the anti-racism group asked for a couple of years ago for people affected by the sin of racism and those who perpetrated or whatever the language was, but I remember that long discussion. Um, and then 
for all people in your creation, that we may learn to respect each other and learn how to live together in your peace. And the response is God in your mercy, bind us together. So there are ways to uh, pray and be more inclusive. There are, it's probably, it's probably something that will take us a little while to get going. Um, my, I have lost my place momentarily, but I will get there. So I'd like the next slide, please. It should be accessible formats if we're on the right. We are there. Perfect. So it's good practice generally to have multiple ways of getting to access to the same information. If we spend a lot more time online, I think that we need to go investigate and actually caption our online videos and presentations such as this. The rationale being that captions not only help people who are deaf, but they help people who are losing their hearing because of age, they can read along. I recently learned in another meeting with another organization that people on the autism spectrum read along to help them process the spoken word. Um, someone told me that that's what she was doing. Captions are helpful for people who speak English as a second language, if we want to reach out more broadly. Uh, and with everyone watching from home, Sometimes people need to mute audio or they have to contend with background noise. And so captions help everyone read along. And I think that's an area that uh, could use some work. Next slide, please. Uh, they all the, them may worship, they recommend having usher training. Um, that is something because the ushers are the first people in they're usually the first sign of hospitality in a congregation. Uh, they're visible to the people. They can offer gracious welcome to people who have disabilities and put everyone at ease. And usher training can be done in consultation. And I will say that at Emmanuel, we like, we like our ushers. Uh, our ushers are good, great people. They, I don't remember anybody grabbing me when I came in. Um, and it's something that, that we do, I think we do well, but we can talk about it if, if as things change, I kind of wonder how Corona will affect ushering and a whole bunch of other things, but it's something to, to consider. Uh, next slide, congressional, congressional, congregational. <laughs> Congregational hospitality. Uh, so pe people with disabilities like everyone else want to participate in the full range of experiences. So for example, I would love us to, and we can have art exhibits again, to have exhibits that include sculpture that can be touched and tactile paintings. I know people who put acrylic paint onto canvas or paper pulp and they make it tactile. And I know some really good um, sculptors who work in ceramics. I would love to have us do something um, more inclusive, just as a general program that anyone, anyone would enjoy. Um, congregational hospitality, there's, you know, if, if we're announcing an event that's offsite, it would always be helpful to offer transportation you know, or offer coordination for transportation. Uh, a good number of folks with disabilities don't drive. And I'm, I know you guys and I'm not shy about asking, but it would be nice if as a general practice, mm -hmm. we include uh, logistics and transportation and invite people to, um, give or seek transportation. Um, another recommendation, nominate people with disabilities to do work and to be contributors and leaders. Don't decide for someone whether getting to a meeting or doing a particular job is quote, too hard. Invite 
them first and then leave it up to them. So I can't tell you how many times, you know, it sometimes can be like pulling teeth in some congregations to, to be allowed to volunteer to contribute. Um, that's something that we can, some of these things we can do for free, asking people to contribute, we can do, you know, that won't cost the parish any money. Uh, and also as far as, uh, we talked about that already with the Committee with Disability Awareness and I think I'd like to move to the next slide, please. So I just, so it should be welcoming a person who is blind or has low vision, is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> Perfect. So some things that churches can do is pr produce bulletins, words to prayers, hymns in large print or braille as requested. I find I have to contact church staff to get that material. I don't mind doing it, but it would be nice if we can think about ways to just have material available when someone comes in. Um, I will say that with Emmanuel, it's interesting because the, uh, avail the ability to have the service leaflet sometimes fluctuates with what else is going on in the parish, but pretty much since, uh, since Mary was here, there's a, a pretty standard procedure with the office so that Kim sends us the material and it's good to have, but if I'm new to a church and I don't know to ask for it, um, anyone I bring in, I would tell them to ask for it, but I haven't brought anyone here into the church for a number of reasons. Um, so that's one thing and I'm looking to see if there's anything else Oh yes, uh, when we put this elevator in, it would be nice to have braille on the panels. It would be nice to know what floor I'm going to instead of having to count the buttons and guess or set off the alarm because I wanna close the door. I've been in buildings where I've done that. <laughs> and if we're, if we're looking at um, accessibility to the building, you know, what's our hallway lighting around the stairs? We have stairs at Emmanuel where it just drop off. I find them, but you know, I always, I wonder how many how many people have fallen down those stairs. So next slide, please. Uh, welcoming a person who is deaf or has who is hard of hearing. Some folks communicate with lip reading. Some folks um, would prefer to have uh, an ASL interpreter. There's actually. I was once at a church that did ASL interpretation and it was it was well received. I think they got grant funding to do it, but that is key. Uh, places of worship should consider a few things to be welcoming to deaf folks. If you purchase uh, listening devices, we did some of this, we did put the loop in. Mm -hmm. um, I forget that it's there because we haven't been in person in so long, but uh, and there's other things that can be done. You know, we can, we can minimize extra sound, you know, if, um, you know, fans, wire, you know, fans, televisions, radios, we can make things, uh, so where you can concentrate on using the loop and concentrating on this, the, um, church service, I was losing my place. Uh, there's something the church office could choose to produce, to purchase a telecommunications device. There are devices that deaf people can use to, con to connect to telephones. And these days there are people, people can use video, uh, video chat to sign and use a sign language interpreter. So I think that there is work that can be done for getting a TDD device or making our communications more uh, open. And I wanted to bring up things that were not related to elevators and ramps because we've been talking about elevators and ramps and they are important, but I wanted to bring up those other things. And last slide, please. So we will finish with uh, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, the composer, writer, uh, producer, and Presbyterian minister. 
and he was concerned with children and families. And this one is important because his affirmation about you know this, one of the songs he sang on his show was "It's You I Like," and it's just it's summarizing at an affirmation that we want to be accepted and loved as we are and unconditional that got love that god offers young and old and people with and without disabilities and i think i have talked long enough so i'm happy to open it up and yes you stopped screen share laura i did <laughs> so now rob rob can see everybody Yep. So questions and comments. So it still may have been a lot. So I apologize, Pete, if you still thought I went into the weeds. Pete, you're on you're on mute. You have to unmute yourself. Very helpful indeed. A great presentation, just like two weeks ago. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I just want to make sure that I addressed your concern. Indeed. Uh, I, I just have to remember it now. <laughs> I can help. Uh, That's right. So any other comments or questions? Well, I guess, Cheryl, I guess what it means for you is you have to be continuously forgiving because, <laughs> because you have to think that people who grab your arm are doing it with best intentions. Yeah, and some of you I've talked to and said, hey, let me take your arm and shown you. <laughs> you know, some okay. of you I haven't yet. And yeah, that's that's true. Gregory, you were gonna say Yeah, something? I just wanted to say, uh, I'm glad you got down into the weeds. I like those weeds. They're They're really good specific things that we can do and work on and be aware of. To me, so much of this is just think about it, be aware yeah. of this. Uh, and um, I also thought of particularly the elderly, as I'm mm -hmm. getting here, faster and faster, um, <laughs> and how many of these things apply to so many people for so many reasons. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it gave, I think it gave us a lot to think about and a lot to work on and, and the yeah. specifics to me were great. I would like help because I will get tired trying to be the only one to remind people of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to say that the, the um, guide uh, that all may worship, um, Cheryl just picked out a few things. The, it's a great guide. Um, it's been around for 20 years. It's been, it's in its seventh edition. So it's been updated and updated as, you know, as time goes on. It's got some great suggestions. It also talks about um, how to support people who are caregivers for people with disabilities, which is great. Um, and it's just, it's got a lot of things in it. So um, the, the role of the clergy, you know, what is their role in all of this? So it's, it's a wonderful guide. Um, and it provides a lot more detail than even than Cheryl presented today, just because, because I, was, I was kind of editing too towards the end. It's like, wait a minute, that's getting into more detail than I want to say. I'm getting tired of talking. <laughs> um, but it is a great book. And I, what I can do if, uh, well, Cheryl, you did this last time. You sent out to all the vestry members your presentation last time. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that, um, and maybe we can talk to Anne Marie about this, maybe getting it out to the congregation, and particularly that the, the whole that book, the guide is really good. It would be easy enough to send a link to that with like two sentences into the e-news if people wanted me to do it. There's a good idea. That's a great idea. I could do it without, and I, I've been keeping links. I've got a general resource list that I need, I can pull out of the notes and just send links around to people too, if they want to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Other people have any questions or other comments? 
Have I told this story before? I'm not sure. Um, but Emmanuel had a 150th uh, anniversary celebration mm -hmm. 2002, I believe, or four. And um, they used the program from the um, old Book of Common Prayer that was used at the time. It was kind of an old fashioned type service. I was using my wheelchair at the time, some injury or whatever, but I was using my chair rather than my walker. And um, I remember the conclusion our easy service, everyone went up to the altar and, um, you know, took communion and stuff. And I remember feeling personally very um, sad that I could not participate in that. I was just sitting there in my chair and and watching it happen and saying, well, it would be really cool if I could just roll up there and be part of this thing. I, I think what comes to me when I think about that is the emphasis is not so much that you are of all things the law that you are doing this, you're meeting some legal requirement or whatever. But is is your is your community set up in such a way that it ex excludes people that would like to be part of that community? Mm -hmm. Is that that's it's not only legally, like you look at, oh, they should do that, but you feel personally excluded. Mm -hmm. And that can be hard. 90% mm -hmm. are welcome. 10% of people with disabilities. I kept saying when we were preparing for this form, 90% are welcome, 90% are invited. That's, that's <laughs> what our tagline should be. You know, that's where we are right now. So I, I consider myself um, disabled, uh, challenged about <laughs> ableism. Uh, you know, and it really, um, and I and I really enjoy hearing from from you and from from anyone that can enlighten me about this. Uh, we have a. We have a, a, a saying on our refrigerator that says, be gentle with slow walkers. And I'm, you know, I've been a slow walker, but I'm really uh, wanting to know more about how I can be uh, uh, able to uh, be more aware about how, how we can treat everyone as full people. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Carol, you made a quick allusion to, um, how, how should I put it? Not feeling completely comfortable inviting people to our church or was that just yeah. to churches? And churches you... in general, mostly, but to some degree our church. For example, you know, we have friends in wheelchairs and I'm not sure. Mm. You know, we have, when I, I have had friends of mine at church who are blind and I always feel like I have to apologize if we, you know, have all of the, the, the language and the baggage. And, you know, it's something that I think we need to talk about messaging yeah, and, yeah. In, a, in a whole, <laughs> a much more, involved way than I could today. I was trying to touch on all of the experiences or many examples. Yeah. So I, I apologize if you, if you were overwhelmed, but yes, that's part of what I 
what I have been thinking. Oh, yeah. That's a very important piece because we have you to help us get through that. Well, if I can be, it, 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 there, there is giving information and opinion and receptiveness to information and opinion. So yes. we'll see how far we can go. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like we have the information. Mm -hmm. What do we choose to do with that information? Well, about? that's the reason why I asked for a separate event because I have had the experience over the years where I have mentioned to somebody something that's in process or has already happened. Mm -hmm. And then people's natural inclination is to be defensive. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a priest at another church in another state who basically said, I can't change the scripture because I commented about something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I've just learned over the years that anytime I have to react to something that's already happened, I'm in a position of weakness, whatever the power dynamic is being mm -hmm. the only or one of a couple only people mm -hmm. and so thanks to Laura for giving me the space to uh, present I, I like the idea of being proactive rather than reactive mm -hmm. yeah and it feels so much of this feels reactive and if I ever tell you I'm tired <laughs> it's because I had to react to people and right. this happens it, this happens in organizations beyond churches some mm -hmm. of this stuff. It's just that churches have their own specific challenges because of, I am not a theologian, but because of the healing narratives in the Bible, because of the language in the prayers, because of the language in the hymns, because of people's general perceptions of churches and disability. Um, and I don't know, I need to do some more research and see or, or maybe we need to create some good way of messaging, you know, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. social media, website, what have you, because we have to message before people come to the door. I have to be comfortable bringing someone to the door, yeah. but we also have to message throughout. And this is one thing, if we get a group of people working on, and hence a committee, um, it would be, a good thing and it's in addition to and complementary to the racism work and the other work because this is another thing that happens to me at organizations if there's a an event about diversity or anti whatever and i make a comment it's oh you're trying to take attention from our big issue whatever our big issue is and i don't want us to go down that road yeah we need to be very intentional and that's the other reason why I kept saying disability awareness and equity and inclusion and accessibility and it's not or, it's and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. um, Becky. <laughs> I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. d it, on, on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we broadcast our, our services. Is there um, a closed caption option on YouTube that uh, a person can access? It, it's there. I think we as an organization have to put it up. I need to research that because the last time I touched on it on the phone or the computer, I don't think, I think it's something about it not being available. Oh. But one thing we could do is figure out in the short term, figure out how to link our bulletin to it like the national cathedral page when you go to their youtube channel they have their service leaflet a link to download it right there um which helps with a lot of it but it doesn't help with sermons so mm -hmm. I, isn't it on our on our youtube channel also to download the uh service leaflet i th i thought there was a link there it comes in the e-news only i know it's in the right. e-news but I'm not, I thought it was also in the, uh, on the, on the YouTube page. I don't think so. I've never seen it. Oh, okay. okay. We need to verify that. We need to probably get familiar with how to add things because somebody's put in, like it now says Anne-Marie Richards presiding and it didn't used to. So there's ways to add text, mm -hmm. but I don't, I haven't looked it up yet, but that would be a good, a good short-term project. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that 
you know, if we did have some sort of a committee, you know, like a lot of groups now are doing DEI, diversity, um, DEI, equity. equity, inclusion. Um, and so if we had something like that, or if we include that in a strategic plan, which I know that we're talking about doing at Emmanuel, um, it would it would then be embedded into the our all of our work. So it wouldn't be something you do over here. It's like integrated into what we're doing with everything. Right, mm -hmm. well, but we can look up some of this YouTube, stu YouTube stuff before yeah. we strategize. Who knows how, how long it'll take us to strategize. That's the other problem. People say, oh, we'll study accessibility. You know, when was the first design for the elevator? 1990, 1980, 1970? <laughs> I'm being facetious, you know, and we're still studying it, you know? Because <laughs> we have to be careful about that too. We need, we need a combination of, of, and of short term and long term planning. Mm -hmm. well, well, Laura and Cheryl and, and Becky, um, practically, what would be the next step in establishing a committee? Well, how did you, how do we establish any committee? Wouldn't it be the same thing? Yeah. I, probably I, the vestry. I think the vestry probably needs to talk about this. Yeah. I'm looking at Becky. Becky, you're below <laughs> me in, 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 in the squares here. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. And I know Cheryl had mentioned in a, uh, in an email previously, uh, to me anyway, um, th there is um, a company, I guess you might say, that will transcribe services. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, but I there's it to the vestry. lead time that's necessary in order for us to get the cheaper version of it, so to speak. And uh, so that there's a lot of, there is coordination that has to be done in order to, if we do that. Right. Uh, I, I certainly would like to investigate YouTube's options first if that's included in whatever fee we pay to use YouTube, um, because that would then obviously, we would not be getting, a, an, you know, having to spend money on another thing that might be already included in a service that we already have. Do yeah. we? I don't know if we pay to use YouTube. I'm not sure about the uploads. I'm not sure. our, our, one of our daughters is a, is a very tech, is in the tech field. So I did ask her if, if, uh, closed captioning was available on YouTube and she seemed to think it is, but I, I don't know how to do it. I am certainly not a tech person. <laughs> yeah, I need to look that. All right. Um, do I, Becky, do I need to send you an email to get this on the Vestry agenda? Because uh, No, I have a pen right here and I already okay. have <laughs> Thank you. As we speak, here are my notes. Perfect. <laughs> and, and what's nice is that, um, Cheryl, is that you're on the Vestry right now yourself. That's why, I mean, I'm not doing my job if I don't bring these up. If you decide in, in, a, you know, in a couple of years that you don't care, then I'll jump off like I would normally, but. <laughs> we care. No one cares, Cheryl. <laughs> I just say, that's an option. I mean, that's most organizations, if you can't make change, you know, you leave. So, <laughs> you know. Uh. So hi, hi. Um, so yeah, thank thank you, Cheryl, for for bringing up a lot of a lot of things. Um, you know, you I, I agree with you that that it's that the accessibility committee um, is 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 geared to to was was geared and formulated for accessibility, not necessarily inclusivity or or yeah. or, or, or or other things. Although although we took on that 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 bridge to you know. We, we realize that first we need accessibility in order to become um, inclusive. You I, know, think, to, I think uh, I remember us discussing that and it was yeah. kind of... When we, yeah, because you were on the committee for a while yeah, also. Yeah. Um, and, and we got great ideas from you then also about signage being in, in Braille as well. Yeah, um, it's, and, and, and and especially lighting. if you're putting in new stuff now. Exactly, and lighting yeah. was, was, was a big part of it also. Unfortunately, our budget, you know, what, what we're able to do is... <laughs> And, and what we're able to do in one felt swoop is very different than what we would like to do. Well, we're so, stuck in a historic building with multiple levels. If exactly. We were, the, the, the approach would be different if we had a new plot of land or building a new building. Completely different. If yes. you didn't do all this, if you didn't do all this in a new building, there would be a serious problem. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I, think, I think that, that, that with the vestry, you know, we're trying to, um, and the accessibility, we're trying to, uh, get as much done 
that we're able to do to make it as accessible as possible for everyone. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I think that we're gonna have to give on some things in, 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 in here and there. But I think that the committee that, that you're discussing about more of the inclusivity um, would, would be extremely helpful as well because, because we don't address things like liturgy. We don't address things like, 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 like teaching, um, teaching people how to act and react to others. <laughs> you know, right, right. It's more, yeah, more so. And there's a um, lot, and I just wanted to bring, you know, bring up some topics and absolutely, yeah, and, and it, there are great topics. But the thing of it is, we need to start somewhere and start actually doing something. Mm -hmm. yep. if, if we're having the same discussion in three or five years, mm -hmm. and we haven't done any fundraising or any anything, you know. We're going to be even later. <laughs> I I agree there. I agree there. I mean, I'm 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 a, I've I've been excited and and I've been I've been um you know about the accessibility portion of it and unfortunately with everything that's happened it's kind of stalled for a minute because, yeah. of, because of fundraising. You know, it's hard yeah. it's, it's hard to put on a capital campaign when when there's no one in the pews to to listen to the message and to and to and to ask themselves. Uh, why are we doing accessibility when we can't even get into the church? You know, <laughs> although now would be the ideal time to actually do the work while we're not in the church. So it's not disrupting us and it can be done. So it's, it's kind of one of those things is like, how do we get it done now? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is, this is a question for the vestry. And yeah. I'm not in the vestry anymore. So, so all you vestry members, how do we get this done now? Begin it now while we're not in church and while it doesn't disrupt um, our, our, exactly. our, our lives, our, our exactly. church lives. And what can we borrow and what can we do? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, and speaking of vestry, there are a number of us whose terms will end fairly soon. So all of you here who are chiming in today, we welcome your participation in the vestry. So please say yes when you are asked either specifically or when the general plea goes out in an announcement that we need volunteers to serve on the vestry, please don't shake your head and say, oh no, I've been there and done that. Please say, yes, I would love to do this. This is an exciting time for Emmanuel and I want to be a part of making these changes. <laughs> Good job, Becky. Yeah. Good timing. Are you sure you didn't have a career in sales? <laughs> I did not, but Bob <laughs> mother, her, her, his dearly departed mother once told me I could sell sand in a desert. So. <laughs> Education is a sales job. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I guess from all of this, I want us to do something and soon. Yeah. If Good. Okay. All right. Good. Any other questions? Any other comments? We're, we're pretty pretty much right down to the wire on the time here. Okay. Very good. Cheryl, thank, thank you. you Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Hey, hi, Cheryl. Cheryl. Yep. Hi to Beth. Yep. Will do. Hi, y'all. Hi there. Oh, there she's good there. day, everybody. Oh, and the pussycat from the pussycat. The pussycat was in uh, Jiggers. Thanks, Cheryl. It was a great program. You're welcome. Did you say in sugar sands? Yeah, no.